Hi, I'm Roseanne de Torres. I'm the managing partner of the Torres and the George Family Law. And this video is another in our series of showing our clients how we provide 360 degrees of care. Here at de Torres and de George, we know that divorce and family law clients often need more than just legal advice. That's why we partner with different professionals that can guide you and offer you services that can assist you in your journey through the legal process and beyond. And today I have with me Deborah Gossoff of In Order. Welcome, Deborah. Thanks, Roseanne. Happy to be here. I'm so happy to, to speak with you today. Tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Sure. So I'm a certified professional organizer. I work with clients to help them streamline and simplify all things in their life, whether it's physical stuff or time or just helping them through life transitions and making the process easier and less stressful. Well, that sounds like something that my clients could certainly use. And you were so kind enough to write a short blog for us that's on our website. And you asked, uh, you, you had a little pop quiz about change. And your question was, change is stressful, exciting, overwhelming, an opportunity for growth, and or all of the above. So what, how do you respond to that question yourself? So I think it depends on the situation. I think at different points in time, change can be all of those things. And you know, there's some change that's very positive, but can still be stressful. There's other change that is thrust upon us. We may not want to deal with that situation and that can make us feel really overwhelmed and out of control. How do you help, how would you be able to help clients that are navigating a life transition like divorce. Give us some tips to help that, that you could use to, to help stay organized through that process. Sure, so I actually have earned a certificate as a specialist in life transitions because transitions can be overwhelming, they can be stressful, they can feel like the scale is unbalanced and the things are out of control. So, Taking control of what you can helps you stay calmer in that situation. So as an example, staying in control of the paperwork. When someone is going through a divorce, as you know, there's a tremendous amount of paperwork that they're dealing with. There are communications back and forth between their lawyer and the opposing lawyer. There is all kinds of financial paperwork involved in um, putting together settlements, their uh, requests for uh, uh, responses to the other attorney, court dates, all kinds of things. So setting up some sort of system that enables you to put your fingers on what you need very quickly when you need it can be very helpful. So you might want files for all of the financial related things, files for everything related to the case information statement, uh, communications from the lawyers and so on. It's so true because the clients that are able to stay organized with their paperwork, I think really have less stress than when uh, than the clients that don't know what to do with all the paper and when they come in they just have a pile of paper as a big stack without any rhyme or reason as to what it goes through. And sometimes I don't know that they really understand what goes with what, but you're certainly somebody that can help them figure out how to organize that material. Right, absolutely. And last summer I ended up with four clients who were all going through divorce at the same time. And it was interesting because some of them, as you said, just had the pile of paperwork and it was really overwhelming. And some had stacks by category. And then I had another one who probably had at least three copies of every document because she would print out all of the emails multiple times. And then she didn't realize that they were redundant or duplicative. And then we had to kind of sort through and figure out, do we have this already? We only need it once. That's right. Yeah. What about scheduling? How does your expertise help somebody with scheduling? So scheduling is one of those things that can be challenging if you have children and a joint custody situation. So setting up some sort of 
shared family calendar can really help let everybody know who's where when, whether it's a child's sporting activities or dance recital or when school vacation is, which parent is dealing with pickup or who has the child on a particular weekend. So whether it's uh, something like Google Calendar or COSI or something like that, that you can color code, that you can share, that when you add an event, everybody sees it, can really help reduce the stress of that situation. And it, it benefits the kids. And that's what everybody really wants in the long run. I think those systems are a major uh, boon to people that are co-parenting and it is the way to go these days. So I didn't know that you can also, as a professional organizer, help somebody set up a system like that. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Talk about the physical environment. Let's say somebody um, has left the home or it could also be, you know, you've got to downsize or move or you have to sell the, the house. Talk to us about physical environment and how you play a role in helping people from that standpoint? Sure. So there are a couple of different things that can happen. Sometimes one parent is, or one partner is staying in what was the joint home, but all of a sudden half the stuff is gone. And so it can feel really empty. I had a client who said, you know, these bookcases look like somebody came in and took everything out and it, it doesn't feel right. So we rearranged things. We moved furniture around. We, uh, instead of having two shelves that were full and two that were empty, we rearranged books and added some decorative items. So there was something on every shelf and it felt like it was theirs. Uh, you might have a situation if you're downsizing, you, you had a larger home when there were more people in family, when the children were there, and now you're moving to a smaller place. One of the things you want to make sure you do is pare down so that you're not moving into a place and having boxes in the garage or the basement that you have no room to unpack. You want to make sure that you're only taking things that you use and love with you. And so yeah. you actually go into people's houses and you help them decide, I'm going to take, you help them figure out what they need for the new home and what they really love and can't part with and help them make that difficult choice about what they're going to give up or get rid of or sell and what they're going to take with them. That could be very difficult for people yeah. uh, going through this process, giving up giving up their personal property like that. It's very hard for most people to part with things that have had a place in their lives. We're all emotionally attached to our possessions, but I can help kind of talk them through what makes sense to hold on to and what doesn't. And what's really important is that we're not just then taking those items and putting them in the trash in, the, in a landfill. I will help them find donation sources or places to give it a second home. They, in many cases, will get a tax donation receipt. They give the item to somebody who can benefit from it and they get it out of their home. So it's kind of a triple win. If somebody's staying in the house and the other spouse has left and now the bedroom is half full, what do you do there? So you might, um, Think about rearranging furniture as one possibility. You, if you had two different closets, you might, rather than having one closet be empty, you might think about dividing your wardrobe. So maybe you have work clothes and casual clothes or winter clothes and summer clothes and divide it between the two closets so that it doesn't feel like there's an empty space. If there was a chair that you're X sat in and you never use, maybe it doesn't need to stay in the bedroom because every time you walk in, that brings up bad feelings. It's you great. can, you know, maybe you just want to do something like get a new bedspread or comforter and change the look of the space. So your, um, your expertise is not just dealing with paper. It can, no, not at all. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. So the last thing you mentioned in your blog was self-care. How does self-care have anything to do with being organized? 
It's so important. You know, it's like the airlines always say, you should put on your own oxygen mask before you help somebody else. Or uh, what's that expression? If mama's not happy, nobody's happy. So you need to do things that nourish yourself, that take care of yourself, whether it's scheduling time to go to the gym or meet a friend for coffee or getting a massage or whatever it is that nourishes you. Because when you are feeling better, when you're taking care of yourself, you have more energy to devote to other people. Awesome. So Deborah, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Roseanne. Of course. Could you tell our audience how to get in touch with you? Absolutely. You can visit my website, which is www.inorder.com, or you can call me at 973-334-3477. Thanks again, Deborah. I'm Roseanne DeTorres, and that's all for now.